Good morning, friends. This is Pastor Lori Landon from First UMC Kirksville, and it is good to gather with you today on this first Friday of a new month as we continue to change into the seasons with all that October has in store. Well, each week when we meet, I try to ask the question, how is it with your soul? And as we ask that question for these next nine weeks, I'll be thinking about those in relation to the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5 and the invitations that Jesus offers there. Um, they're called the Beatitudes because they're offered as a form of blessing. And as an additional resource to the scripture, I'll also be using a book by Mark Scandrett, called The Ninefold Path of Jesus, Hidden Wisdom of the Beatitudes. Now, in these Beatitudes, in this Sermon on the Mount, as Jesus is teaching the people there, Jesus addresses nine different areas of human struggle. Um, he gives an invitation into a different way of living, into this kingdom of heaven, a God's kingdom. What does that mean? mean? What's different about the invitation he gives than the ways that we might normally approach things? And in those, Jesus points us toward what is real and true. And the first of the unusual blessings that Jesus gives is, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, when the Gospel of Luke tells about Jesus' teaching, um, he just says, blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So my question for us would be today, what comes to our minds when we think about these words? When we think about poverty, what, what does that make us feel? Now, we might think first about money, because that's often the way that the word poverty is used. But that's not the only place in our lives that we experience poverty in the way, especially that Jesus includes it here in the Sermon on the Mount. It's found in any area of life where a person doesn't have enough or where we feel like they're not enough, that something is lacking. And we all have places in our lives where that's the case. And our first instinct in response to that, when we think about the places where something is lacking, is to hold on to what we do have even more tightly, to make us feel safe and secure. Physically, we may find that our bodies do this. We may find our shoulders kind of hunch up. We may find that our hands have closed and are squeezing tightly. We may kind of draw inwards. Our bodies mirror this anxiety and worries that we're feeling inside. And we all have worries and anxieties, right? I say, if I ask you all to take a piece of paper right now or just to speak out loud, what are you worried about? I'm going to guess that every single one of us has at least something. Now, the specifics would be different for each one of us, but they often cluster in a few general areas. They cluster around money and jobs and finances, all those parts of our financial well-being. They cluster around our physical and emotional health, around our relationships and the well-being of those we love, around our sense of esteem and identity and significance and whether we're making a difference in the world. And then a big one is anticipating future difficulties or pain and uncertainty. Now, worry is different than feeling concerned about something. Concern can actually be a helpful thing. It can cause us to take action that may lead to a better result in the future. But worry, it just repeats on an endless cycle. It keeps us up at night. It prevents us from concentrating. And most of us are well-practiced at worrying. And when we hear Jesus say, do not worry about your life, sometimes we feel a sense of shame because we're not even sure how we could begin to not worry. It's hard to picture a life where there are no worries. 
I wonder though if maybe we could hear those words as an invitation to a different way of being, to a way of trust. What would we have to see and believe about the way that the world is that would allow us to be less anxious? What would allow us to live the way Jesus did? Now we see several pictures in scripture where the people around him are filled with worry and fear and Jesus is not. What would allow us to do that? To live in open-handed trust even in the middle of hard times and difficult situations? Well, I think one of the things is a knowledge of that reality that nothing can separate us from the care and presence of God. Not our actions, not our circumstances, not what the world does. God's care and presence is constant, even if we can't recognize it because of choices we or other people have made. And so think about those closed fists and those hunched up shoulders again. What happens if you gently open your hands, if you relax your shoulders? How does that feel? You can often tell a difference right away um, just from those simple actions. There's often a sense of relief, of peace, of relaxation. If you're a shoulder huncher, like I am, it's actually easier to breathe once you relax your shoulders. And in this first beatitude, Jesus is inviting us into the surprising blessings that are founded in this way of open-handed trust. Because when we open our hands, we can receive the good and give thanks for it. Gratitude is an incredible way to reduce worry. So today, think about what makes you feel alive and connected to what is good. It doesn't have to be anything big. It could be something tiny. It might be the bird that fluttered by outside the window. It might be your morning tea or coffee. It might be something that wouldn't make sense to anybody else. Where is that evidence that you can see? As you look back, that you've been cared for and loved, gratitude is a huge antidote to worry. When we open our hands, that lets us share what we have. And that grows this sense of abundance and contentment inside of us. It is also one of those things that can help combat that sense of worry and fear. Because by sharing, it gives us that sense of, I have enough to be able to share some of what I have with someone else. When we open our hands, to express our deep desires, those deep longings. That deepens our relationship with our creator because it lets us see the surprising way those may be met. Not everything we have a desire for is going to be met in the way that we expect. But the deep longings behind it often there will be something that comes in a way that we may be very surprised by. And when we open our hands to let go of expectations, that's a big one too. So often we hang on so tightly to the way that we hoped and dreamed that the world would be, that our lives would be. But when we can open our hands and release those, we can find freedom to more fully live in the way that our life actually is, the life that we have right now rather than remaining bound to an image of a life that didn't happen, of those dreams for the future that did not come true, that things took a turn, and that's not how things turned out. Opening the hands is more than just physical. It can also impact that answer to that question, how is it with our soul? As Scandrat reflects in this book, Jesus invites us into radical trust, believing that nothing can separate us from what is most essential to our well-being. The divine presence is with us through whatever difficulties we face. 
It's an invitation to live with open hands, giving our sacred consent, and speaking a radical yes to the life we have, the life we come into no matter what. It's an invitation to trust that the one who made us will bring us through. So friends, in these days ahead, maybe when the anxiety is creeping in, when you feel it happening, I know in a stressful week, I sometimes realize, oh, my shoulders are up here. I have to physically remind myself to relax them. So maybe when that anxiety and worry creeps in and gets in the way of your ability to trust, try a simple practice. Take a few deep breaths, relax your shoulders, and open your hands. And then in that position, talk to the one who shared that wisdom on the hill. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for, though, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Where are the ways in that moment that something is lacking? Maybe it's simply that ability to not worry. Share that with God. So I pray for us today. The creator, my life is in you. I receive this moment as a gift. All that has been and what lies ahead remains a mystery. It's kept hidden for now. But I trust in the love that spoke this world into existence. I say yes to whatever this day may bring. Just let me see and cherish what is real in the middle of it. Amen. Well, friends, as you go into these days ahead, may you honestly admit and recognize those places where you fit into that poor in spirit category. May you celebrate the reality of the, the abundance that does exist, even in the hard times. May you live with open hands, with gratitude, with generosity and satisfaction. And may you walk in the way of trust. And when that's hard, because there are days it really will be, reach out. Reach out to one another. Reach out to one of us. And let's share this journey together. Take care, friends, and we'll see you here next week.